of weeks I've been contacted a few times by other YouTubers and even non-YouTubers just to share some pictures and some knowledge about shapers. In these emails and in the comment section there were some really specific questions. Basic questions about how to use a shaper. And then I thought maybe I can make a video. So today we're gonna make T-nuts and we start from nothing. I also received some stickers. These envelopes come, all three of them, from the United States. So I will put them on my cheap door and we will talk about them later. But first, return to the basics. Return to the beginning. In the beginning, there was nothing. Only darkness. Yeah, yeah, we know the story. Continue. And then there was the shaper. Of course, without a vice. This shaper is green. I suppose you understand this video is based on a real story. So, you bought yourself a shaper, no vice, no cutting tools, no nothing at all. You just managed to wire up the electric motor so the machine can move. Not a problem, everything is more or less in good shape and the base of all we need is always T-nuts. But T-nuts I don't have. I think making T-nuts is always a good idea to start as a first project. I prepared a blank. We're gonna make four T-nuts. I already drilled and tapped. This is uh, metric 10 and you will understand in a moment why I already did it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this piece of scrap, we're gonna bolt the part on it and then use the made in Germany clamps on the table. Of course you cannot clamp the part directly on the table because we have to cut the surface and this clamp will be in the way. If we're gonna work the sides we need clearance at the bottom side for the cutting tool both sides of course the top surface no problem making the two slots not problem sideways there is a problem so before we bolt it on we're gonna put some washers between Voila, these uh, nuts here, they put the fear, so the part is never gonna fit on the table. That's not a problem, we take two things, whatever. Made in Germany clamps. Take a scale, or I took my square and try to line up with the T-slots you see in the bottom. It's very easy. Now I'm gonna take this part off again and let's talk tool holding. Sometimes there is the question shall I use this extended tool holder or shall I put the cutting tool directly in the tool holder. Now let me show you the why and why not? First of all, we're gonna take this machine apart because there's two different systems of tool slide. That's what I like on these small machines. You don't need an overhead crane to take it apart. On 
On this machine, the main dovetail is fixed on the ram and the lead screw is in the tool head. And now the gib is falling apart. That's okay, we will survive. On other machines, the main dovetail and the lead screw is fixed on the ram and you have only a top slide just like this cross slide of my lathe. Of course there will be the problem of clearance and this is why we can use the extended tool holder as I call it. I don't know if it's the official name, I don't think so. This is a very rigid system but you lose rigidity in the tool holder. Hey, can we pay some attention here? Especially for you, I take my machines apart. Okay, let's continue. Now, in this system, if the tool slide is completely down, we could lose also rigidity, but in the primary system, we can put the cutting tool directly in the clapper, no problem, it's a very rigid system, but if the tool, sl uh, the tool slide is completely down, there could be a movement. So I don't know which system is the best, I think there's pros and cons for both of them. I'm gonna reinstall the part we're gonna make, of course, and I propose first we're gonna talk stickers and after that we're gonna talk grinding cutting tools. I received stickers from Dean from the air care shop and Dean also includes stickers from other YouTubers. Uh, there was no particular reason to do that but he did just because he's a nice guy so he gave me also a sticker from Steven a sticker from Alan and then of course we have Duke Lester Metal Workshops it's a very nice channel I like very much we have Uchol from the Woods Creek Workshop now the fun is Uchol included in his mail also a little note but I think he forgot to write something on it now to make cutting tools we can use of course high speed steel once I had the question, is it possible to use inserts? Uh, no. I never tried, but the cutting speed for inserts is way higher than the machine can go. And inserts, they don't like these interrupted cuts, so I think they will break. Maybe I should try this one day, but I don't believe it uh, works. Maybe you try and then let us know. Try to find quality high speed steel. I bought this one on Amazon a while ago and this is really shit. It's not really good quality and when you grind it, it makes burrs. So it's a bit gummy. This one, not good. Let's take this plan away and then we're gonna make a bit drawings about cutting angles and all this blah blah. Now I have a problem. I don't know the dimensions anymore. Last week my son uh, came here with friends of him and Juliette made this flower and this rainbow especially for me. Thank you Juliette. So you understand, I will not take it off. For the top surface, this will be our cutting tool. Yes, of course the cutting action is coming to the camera and the backstroke in the blackboard. And here we are gonna form the chip. In fact, this is the cut surface, this is a not yet cut surface, so let's take it away. We need here some relief, so the bottom of the tool will not rub on the finished surface. And this side has to be 
sharp as a knife. We're gonna move the tool a little bit backwards. So if we cut this shoulder, we have again the relief angle to this surface and a relief surface to uh, relief angle sorry relief angle to this surface the fun trick would be of course if we can make one tool that can cut the both shoulders so we take all this away again this is the t-nut other side yeah t-nut and here we have to make the same but in fact the opposite angles yeah relief angle and relief angle with this indeed it is possible to make it in one tool and here it is this point will be the cutting side so we're gonna make a relief angle this triangle is gonna disappear this will be the cutting side for the other way too so we take this away and this will be the relief angle in your book if you have one I don't have one this angle should be about 7 degrees we're gonna use a tool in both directions so of course this angle will also be 7 degrees some other books say 8 degrees we're not gonna argue with this now to make this uh, 7 degrees angle on the cutting tool there's an easy little trick this is the bench grinder perfectly round ok that will do the center of the grinding wheel and here is the table and the table don't leave a gap bigger than maximum about 1.5 or 2 millimeters between the grinding stone and the table that's dangerous now if we put this table in line with the center we will see that here if we grind some kind of cutting tool for example we will have this relief angle I think we all in the hobby shop have the same problem we have a small shop with small machines and a, a small budget and that's why I have all these cheap little things but for me that will do the trick and I took the table off and I made this system so now I have the same angle on this stone and on this stone I try to keep both stones about the same uh, diameter so I don't have this problem of different angles I'm not gonna grind this tool on camera because I have to hold it and you will see my fingers and not what I'm doing so it's a bit pointless so the first phase I did grind is this one put it on the table about 90 degrees yeah, in the length of the table and I took about 10 millimeters and when you see the sparks coming over this surface it means you reached the edge and then you go really easy easy just barely touching and if you do that you don't need to hone this surface first this side then flip it around other side this gives us the diamond shape now to do the bottom side the relief angle I hold it on the edge this side here with a bit of luck you can see the diamond shape and this side is of course cutting side relief angle relief angle I'm gonna try to move it this way I hope you can see it enough blah blah 
let's install this cutting tool and make these T-nuts look at the cut face here we can see clearly the relief angle there we go set zero we're gonna feed in a half a millimeter Look the slide ready for action this is going to work as a roughing tool and after cut we will see all these lines in the surface this will not be a nice mirror finish top surface is finished now we're gonna uh, turn this tool a bit to create a relief angle between the tool and this surface we're gonna cut now before we start the machine we crank completely stroke a complete stroke by hand to make sure everything clears not to crash into something do something I feed down by hand of course there's no automatic down feed on this machine How about my cutting tool? It cuts or what? So now we have to do the same thing on this surface. Other way. Voila. Take it out. 90 degrees turn. Back in. Make it long enough. Turn by hand. Smells good. Now this surface is also finished. I had to add some clamps because the whole part tried to move on me. But uh, okay, uh, now it uh, seems to hold a bit. Let's go to the blackboard again and see how we're gonna cut out these two right shoulders. We can feed down and then cut from the side to the middle or we can feed to the side and then cut down from the top to the bottom now I'm gonna use this system because this is a cutting side of the tool the cutting tool we made is not really designed to use the bottom side to cut so I'm gonna feed down a half a millimeter why only a half because this setup is a, a little bit uh, weird a bit sketchy so we're gonna take light cuts just like we did before for the other faces feed down a half a millimeter and then go to this uh, little line I marked here is five millimeter and I'm gonna use the dials to do this I left one tenth of a millimeter of material to make a finishing pass so we're gonna take out the steps that were formed by feeding in every half a millimeter and I'm gonna do this in one movement in fact in two movements first we're gonna move left to right make this corner finish 
and then we're going to slowly move the tool up to finish this uh, left side wall. I moved the clapper the other way to cut the other shoulder now. I moved the tool 90 degrees. I set my zeros on the dials, touching off of course, then zeros. But I'm not gonna bother you with cutting this other shoulder. I suppose you have better things to do than just watch some Belgian dude making a right shoulder. The top surfaces are finished and the shoulders are finished. I just have to deburr and do a bit clean up, but first we're gonna give it a try. It works! Now we're gonna flip this part over the other side and on the what is now the bottom side we're gonna put it on top and then we're gonna cut this distance we need. Now if we make T-nuts always make them a little bit too small because when they fit a bit too tight and there's some chips interfering you're gonna have big problems getting it out so leave one or two millimeter less than you really need if we're gonna flip this part around I'm gonna put this surface on this uh, rusty thing of course we're gonna lose every precision but precision we don't give up precision is not that important in this project it's just having fun with the shaper that's all and this is a finished product well uh, almost finished I just have to clean up I deburred quickly not to cut myself that's all so maybe in the light you can see the surface finish of course it is not perfect because we did not have any rounded nose on this cutting tool but I think for the first time don't worry about surface finish just cut and have fun okay clean up and see if it works if you make T-nuts like this, always beware that the top surface of the T-nuts must be lower than the surface of the table, otherwise it's completely pointless of course. In the book it may be marked that T-nuts should be hardened. In industrial workshops maybe it's a good idea, but I think for the home shop it's not a good idea. If you have ships that interfere here with your T-nuts, they will make imprints in the T-nuts. If the T-nuts are hardened, they will make imprints in the table and you're gonna lose the precision of your table. If the T-nuts are not hardened, after a few times you will uh, wear out these threads in it that's not a problem if they don't work anymore make new I saw this video one day of this man who just bought himself a brand new milling machine you know this uh, style mini milling machine bench top uh, machine brand new and a book and then he's packing it out and he's plugging his machine in he opens his book and lesson one is making T-nuts and this man take measurements and he starts making his T-nuts on his brand new milling machine and you hear the machine screaming oh stop help you're doing it wrong and at the end of his video his T-nuts you almost needed the hammer to put them in the slots 
but this video was absolutely not a failure. The point of this video was just like a little kid on Christmas evening when he receives his presents and he wrapped the paper off and it opened the box and then you see these two little lights in his eyes and all this excitement. This man was not making peanuts. This man was just having a great time in his workshop. Thanks for watching.